story. You know, there's nothing like a few hours sleep to freshen you up, sharpen the senses. I mean, it's a hard life when we need our proper rest. But in our business, well, let's just say that sometimes that causes problems. And that's exactly what we'll be looking at in this issue of Alert. Many accident investigation reports these days will have fatigue as one of the main causes. A grounding or a collision, for example, caused by lack of attention by a fatigued officer. His lack of sleep, the result of an unreasonable watch pattern and an excessive workload on top of his watchkeeping duties. But minimum manning and watchkeeping patterns are not the only causes of fatigue. There's a whole variety of environmental, operational, physiological and psychological factors that can, in one way or another, affect the health and performance of every person on board. The IMO guidelines on fatigue mitigation and management provide practical advice on how to combat fatigue. Essential reading for those stakeholders involved in the design, management and operation of ships. And something else that should be seriously considered is the US Coast Guard's Crew Endurance Management Program, which identifies the factors affecting crew endurance and the specific risks that relate to ship operations. And there's a lot of other important work going on. The Cardiff Research Program on Seafarer Fatigue shows that the consequences of fatigue are not only felt in terms of impaired performance and reduced safety, but also in decreased well-being and increased risk of mental health problems, both of which are known to be risk factors for future chronic disease. To support various life Another study concludes that fatigue may be a factor in 11 to 23 percent of collisions and groundings, and it proposes a number of measures to reduce it, such as the proper implementation of the ISM code and of the Maritime Labour Convention, the optimization of the organization of work on board, the reduction of administrative tasks, and the lengthening of one of the resting periods per 24 hours. There is no doubt that if we are to reduce fatigue and at the same time prevent accidents, we need a process. And that process must be properly managed. The most important thing in fatigue management is education equipping those at sea and on shore to better organise workplaces, systems and their personal lives to mitigate causes and effects of fatigue. This must include the people who make policy decisions and allocate resources. Accident investigations typically reveal a chain of responsibility extending well beyond the fatigued seafarer who falls asleep or makes a mistake. In fatigue management, making the chain of responsibility explicit is essential. Those at the top must make their expectations clear through a formal policy statement. Equally important is the need for regular feedback of information from the ship to management ashore. When it comes to mitigating fatigue, the management of hours of work could well be the most critical element and the most costly should an accident occur. But let's not forget the design and construction stages of a vessel which can produce a lifelong benefit to the onboard welfare of the crew. If we don't take proper account of crew well-being within the design concept, especially with regard to the debilitating effects of noise, temperature, motion, vibration, intensity of lighting, etc., all we do is end up making a significant and irreversible contribution to the underlying cause of fatigue. It is time to wake up to the consequences of fatigue because those consequences can be costly, and in some cases, deadly. That's it for this issue. Visit the website if you want to find out what other marine professionals have to say. Hope to see you again soon, and in the meantime, try and get some rest, eh?